Well, hello. Welcome back. I'm Allie, and this is Louise. Hi. And we're going nice. to, we just finished talking about Revelation, now we're going to talk a, a, a little bit about Jesus and some of his accomplishments. accomplishments. Okay, I would like for you to turn to Mark, the fifth chapter of Mark. I'm going to give you just, a, I'm just going to uh, give you a little summary. I'm not going to really read this about, I really want to talk about this woman with the issue of love is the main one I want to talk about. But I want to talk about a little bit about leading up to her. Jesus, Jesus was getting in all kinds of trouble and they were wanting to kill him. I mean, over, over in Galilee. So he said, let's go to the other side. So he gets in the boat with his men, and they go over to the country of the Gadarenes. And then they come, they run across this man that is demon-possessed. He says that he's been living in the tombs, he cuts himself, and he has always, all the people around there were always trying to put chains on him and didn't do any good. He would just throw off the chains, and he was actually naked running around and all those people didn't it doesn't it didn't sound like it was a good situation for the man so, so jesus came on the scene and and he just the demon and the demons in the man addressed jesus and jesus talked to those demons and they said well you know like who are you and and if you don't cast us out and he said well if you're going to cast us out just take us you know put us, there's, a, there's a there's a herd of swine over there at least let us go to the swine these demons want some kind of warm body to live in. So if, they, if he's going to get cast out of that man, they want to go somewhere else. So he did. He said, okay, go in the swine. Well, the, well, even pigs don't like demons. So they ran down the hill, and they all jumped in and drowned. But what, and then after that happened, after the man was delivered from these demons, <laughs> it says that, all of a sudden, he was. They found him. The townspeople found him all dressed and clean, you know, look, looking pretty decent. And they were well. They first of all, the people that were taking care of the herd of the swine or the pigs ran down, ran to town to let the owners know what had happened. And they were all had to come and find out. That's the when they found the man all dressed and everything in his right mind, and they did not like it at all. They told Jesus would asked him, I think it's kind of kindly, they said, well, a nice way to, to leave. We don't want you here. So Jesus went back to the boat, and then as soon as those people left, he found the man that had been delivered from the demons, and he told him that, and the man said, I would like to go with you, Jesus. And Jesus said, no, you cannot go with me. Now, most of the time, if anybody else had asked Jesus, that we, we can come and go with you. He would say, no, you can't, but I want you to be keep quiet because the reason he didn't want him to keep quiet was because he knew that all these people would be coming to him and trying to get him to either heal, deliver him, or whatever, or feed him. Jesus. So he didn't tell this man, you know, you cannot go with me, but he says, I want you to go home, and I want you to tell your family what I've done for you, and I want you to tell everybody that you know, everybody you see. It says that this man went to, I'm not sure like, if it's seven cities or something like that. I don't know how many he went to. But he went all over, everywhere, broadcasting. Look, I'm the man. I know you've heard about me. I was the one living in the tombs. and But now look at me now. I'm in my right mind. I'm sane and I am normal. And he has told me to go and tell the good news of what he has done what he did for me. And then, then it says here that later, then I was, I've often wondered why when Jesus left and when Jesus came back, why all these people knew about Jesus. Well, they knew about the, Jesus from this one man that had gone and told, told the story of his deliverance. And then one day, as Jesus was walking, walking by, this, there was a, um, it says that there was a, it says right here, I think it was a, no, no, it says right here, it says, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers. So here we are now. These, we're not talking about Jews. I mean, if, it's, if he's a ruler, it doesn't say the synagogue or anything. It just calls him a ruler. It says, and one of the rulers of the, oh, it does say, it of the synagogue, synagogue, it is of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. So it was a Jew, excuse me. 
and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Jairus, we've heard that right, mm -hmm. by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and he said, my daughter, and we saw him greatly saying, my, my little daughter lies at the point of death, and I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her. See now, deal is, when he left home, he knew she was at the point of death, so he he was probably concerned if you know she might have already died or whatever, but he asked her, please come. Okay. Now Jesus turned and said, Yes, I will go with you. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Well, that's what I was telling you about all these people that are over there. They all know about Jesus now. And then a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no, and no thing better, but no thing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched his garment. Well, okay, this was a very, very serious thing, Louise. We know what. Ha what about women that? Uh, what about you, women that were in their period? You were you were not to leave your home. You could you could be stoned. You could actually be stoned and put to death if you left your quarters during that period of time. That's right. So for her to have come out uh, among the crowd, uh, she was literally taking her life in her she own hands. She was. Don't you know she was all covered up? And nobody could recognize her. About, but you know, she, she was so she desperate. Was. She, she was definitely was desperate. Point of desperation. And you imagine? I'm going to tell you. Let's just really be real you know we're women here with this issue of blood for 12 years i mean that means she's been she's had this issue i mean you you're getting highly anemic you just you just can't bleed for 12 years and be healthy or be or be well no doubt I mean, she had no life she, she was, had no she, life she no. was in her home supposedly in her home and people were having and to bring she things was to untouchable her. and but she had apparently she apparently she had had some means because it said she had spent has spent an awful lot of money in 12 years on physicians. Had. So it's 12 years, that is an awful long time to be ill like that. She had suffered many things. You see now, you know, I will have to tell you, you know, we know about doctors, but do I love doctors, they're wonderful, but we know doctors are practicing. So way back then they could have, it said, and has suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no thing bettered. But rather, there she was, she was worse. Okay. You know, let me say something here, Mally, just yes. as you're talking about that. You know, to put it in perspective, we we have, I just saw on Facebook, where this young woman has um, breast cancer that is metastasized through her body, and now she has brain cancer. And she was asking for prayer, and she was going through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And I've heard people that have gone through treatment for cancer saying that the cure is almost worse than the death itself, the disease itself, because they literally almost kill your body in order to yeah, survive. Absolutely. And I think this woman is just, she was at her rope's end. This was just, this was her last hope, okay? Yes. She, she just have to put put yourself in her, her right. shoes. So here it is right here. These are such key scriptures right here. They're so important. But when she had heard, you see what I was telling you about the the, the, the wild man or whatever you want to call him, the demon possessed, ex, the ex demon possessed man had gone around talking about his deliverance. It says when she had heard. So what did she do first? She heard. She heard about what had happened to him. What's the Bible she say about faith? First. Faith comes by, by hearing, hearing and, and hearing, hearing the by word the word of God. God. So she had heard this word, this man's testimony, which was so powerful. So she heard it. She had heard of Jesus. There she had heard of Jesus. So she, but she said in herself, she talked to, talk to we got to talk to ourselves a lot, don't we, Louise? We need to talk to ourselves. And we, you know, faith filled words. We talk yeah. to ourselves. She, she told her, talked to herself. She said, now if I, can just some way get there. I've got, so I have farming. got to get there. I've got it. So she determined in her heart that she was going to get to Jesus. And she said, all I've got to do, nobody's going to know I'm there. All I've got to do is just 
touch the hem of his garment and I know that I'm going to be healed. So that is what we were talking about, faith. Faith arising. And faith, faith, there are a couple things here. It's one that she, faith came because she heard. That's right. And, and if you don't, if you don't know what the word says on the issue, you have no faith to aim toward. That's so right. she had faith because of what she heard. Number two, she acted on her faith. Faith always has action. Faith always has has corresponding That's action. Right. So it's not just enough to say, yeah, I believe that Jesus can heal me. But she had to press through the crowd. She had to she had to get out of her house. She had to get she out of her house. She had to believe and get out of her house. She had to get out of her house and you know what's like, where was Jesus? She had just heard that he was he was around. And she asked you know, and she had that. she had to find him. She had to find him and plus she had to get close enough to them. I mean, let's just think of they were talking about that in a minute we're gonna talk about how many people are surrounding him. Okay, and when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press. You know what that means? I'm talking about people are all around him, pressing off all because everybody else wanted to do the same thing she did. There are a lot of sick folks out there. In the press behind and touched his but she got to him. She did it. She got to him. She touched his garment. She touched the hem of his garment. And I understand we were talking about, I mean, I've heard this possibly, that, that Jesus, it could have been a prayer shawl that he had, and the prayer shawl has fring, no. fringe. I don't, I don't know. No, we don't know. there was an anointing. Yeah, Jesus well, had the healing correct. anointing. But you know what? People go from minister to ministers with healing anointings and they don't get healed. But I want you to look at what she did. She said, because you see, faith not only has action, but it speaks. Yes, ma'am. And she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be she spoke made it forth. well. Yes, ma'am. She, she did. spoke her faith into existence. You see, it's not enough for us to just say it. We've got to believe it in our heart, but we have to speak it with our mouth. Okay. And, you know, it's the same thing for salvation. And, and so, but there was a healing anointing. Yes. An amazing thing, Mally, about this, all the people that were surrounding him and touching him, she was, all of a sudden, he goes, wait. One. Okay, well, I'm, well you're getting ahead of me just a tad. <laughs> okay, okay, I know. Okay, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. For she said, if I just may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. But she had to get up. She had to move. She had to get there. She had to confess with her heart. She actually believed it in her heart. She had to believe it in her heart, and she believed it. I shall be whole, and she confessed it. Whether she... Listen, you know what? She could have repeated it all the way wherever she found him. You know, I'm going to be whole. When I touch his, when I touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be whole. I mean, she had literally convinced herself it was going to happen. And straightway, the, immediately and straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now, what had happened? What did what Jesus turned around? Turned around. And I'm talking said, about him. Somebody said, Wait a minute. has touched me. Somebody no, has going, touched me. Dude, are you kidding? And the disciples <laughs> all looked at him like, Wait a minute. Yeah, Everybody's touching you. Everybody, touching you. What are you talking about? Everybody here about? is touching you. But what did this woman do? I mean, she did she not want to say a word. She was pointing for her. And, you know, this but is she didn't want to say anything. She was so scared. She was shaking fear. It says with fear and trembling. He, Jesus looked around and said, okay, who, who touched me? And it was like, oh, no, I, I'm going to be exposed here. I can't, I can't let this be known because I could actually be go. They could take me out right now and stone me. They didn't because but she they didn't. was healed. But the thing I think we need to put this in relationship to today is that there are a lot of people that are running around from minister to minister, people that have anointed healing ministries. You can be Dr. Hagen, you can be T.L. Osborne, you can have go to a lot of men that manif manifest the gift of healing. But even if the anointing is there to heal, you've got to have your part to play. You've got to believe you have to believe that when they lay hands upon you, you shall be that's healed. That's right. You see, that's 
that's what activates the anointing. That's the right. healing anointing was there, but it was Correct. activated by her faith. That's right. So let me read it. And Jesus immediately, immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Okay, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, well, he was, they had to be kind of nice. They were trying to be nice to him. <laughs> thou seest the multitude thronging thee. Thou seest the multitude thronging you. And you are saying, Thou who touched me? Well, they all been touching you. Well, anyway, they had to be. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came she had to come forward then she knew that she had been exposed she could not she couldn't she had to do it then she came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and what did jesus say to her this is so important because i read this a lot to myself myself he said unto her daughter thy faith has made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, I tell myself all the time, I'll just say, and Jesus said, Mally, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of whatever it is that I'm concerned about. And I just, this is what we're talking about sometimes when you need to claim some scriptures for ourselves because this, these are the very words of Jesus and I believe that I am his daughter and I, and I can claim what is rightfully mine. You know, I was uh, I, I was somewhere this morning and I'm kind of doing a good a goody thing. I was taking some buttermilk biscuits to a friend of mine at work. And um, another person there that worked that's really sweet, she came in and she was having some problems and stuff. And, and I said, well, you know what? I could pray for you right now, but I'm not going to because I'm going to be back in a week. I'm not going to pray for you right now. What I want you to do is get on my website or, or our iPod or iPad or whatever we have, Facebook or whatever. I'm, I'm not technical. Uh, I want you to get on that site, and I want you to start listening to the healing ministry teaching that I've been doing because I want you to have faith to receive the prayer that God has for you. Why did I say that? Because you cannot be passive in receiving your gifts from God. You have to be active. Active how? You have to believe that God is not only able but willing to do what he says he's going to do. He said here, lady, it was your faith. It was your faith. See, yeah, I think we, we just... We don't. We take ourselves out of the picture. Right. But see, we can't take ourselves out of That's the picture, right. Mally. That's right. It's it, my faith. That's what I. That's what I say to myself. Yeah. And Mally, what is your faith you're saying, my Mally, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your issue, whatever it is. Well, you know, I've been having some trouble with my hand, and um, I, and I claim my healing. I spoke to the 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 demon that was causing the yeah. sickness. But I've also been doing something that I can encourage every one of you to do is I had my my husband to order on Dr. Kenneth Hagen's website a CD on healing scriptures. And it's wonderful. I can't tell you how soothing it is. It is. But I have this by my bed, and my husband can tell you, I, when I go to sleep at night, I, have I put on the CD, mm -hmm. and he starts reading all the healing scriptures and i'm going to tell you something it just builds so much faith yes, in your does. spirit yes, it's it like does. eating yes. a really it's good true. meal the word of god is life to those that find it and health to all their flesh that's exactly what you're doing you're being you're taking the health into your flesh and i like to do it at night before i go to sleep yeah. because you know why then you sleep whatever really you do at night before you go to sleep it runs that's all correct. through your mind all night long the that's last right. thing you put in it That's runs correct. through your mind. When I was playing my piano and taking piano lessons, um, I would have a really hard time on a certain piece, and I'd practice it and practice it before I went to bed, Mally. 
And do you know that when I'd get up the next morning and go to play the piece, it Could would you all do it? Yeah, it oh, would all right. come together because you have been playing it all night, I guess, in your brain. Or is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. You've been practicing. So you know, Larry this, was glad it was in the sleep yeah. and not in the real <laughs> in the room. I didn't mean to say that, Louise. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this this is these are things that you can actively do that will help to encourage you know the process of healing because so many people get so discouraged because they say well i prayed or so and so prayed for me but i haven't received the manifestation well be patient that's right keep feeding on the healing scriptures and build yourself up in your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, that's, that's another absolutely. thing that God told me today. Right. Well, you don't pray in the no, Spirit enough. enough. Well, anyway. Okay, there was one more thing. You know what? We left that ruler hanging. The ruler. <laughs> Jay, you're right. Yeah, with the daughter <laughs> there <that's> dying. <laughs> yes, we just left him hanging out there. Well, let's just kind of... <laughs> Let's get him back into the picture, man. I mean, there he was. I mean, this, he's saying, wait a minute, what about me? You know, that woman, you know, he's, come on, my daughter is at the point of death. What's going to happen? You know, please, like, he was very patient. I'm sure he was waiting on Jesus to come. Well, anyway, so while he yet spoke, there came, or the ruler of the Senate, listen to this. While Jesus was just still speaking to this woman, telling her, be holy and be holy or play. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain that said, what they, what they say? She's dead. Your daughter is dead. Just Your daughter her. is dead. <laughs> Don't trouble the master anymore. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, what, he, what did he say to, what did he say to J, J. Iris? What did he say, Louis? You know, I know you know. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Only believe. In other words, they just said, told this man. Your daughter is Your dead. daughter is dead. Now, what I mean, that is not a good a good report. A good report. Okay. And <laughs> now and now Jesus said, Oh, don't, don't worry afraid. about that. Don't, don't worry. worry about don't it. worry about that. Only believe. So that's what that this is another big word for us right here. When you get a bad report. A lot of times it's don't, first thing is don't let fear come in. Mm -hmm. Don't let fear come in and take mm -hmm. charge and control. I mean, mm -hmm. it will completely take all your faith away. Don't be afraid. Only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him. Then this is another key. He would, he let all, anybody, unbeliever, all, he got rid of all the unbelievers. He said he suffered no man to follow him except Peter and James, those were the only two that he let go with him. And, oh, and John, excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> and John. Okay, and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see if the tumult, there they are. You know what happens if somebody dies, some horrible situation takes, what happens? I mean, then you've got a crowd there. When, oh, I mean, man, something they turn it into when, a party. When something bad Literally, happens, you've got, like I a, mean, they're all. A moment for casserole. They all show up. They all show up. <laughs> They saw the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come into the, when he was come in, in the house, he saith unto them, Why maketh ye this ado? And weep. There he was. And why are y'all weeping? I'm Jesus asking for weeping. They all looked at him like he was absolutely cuckoo. Okay, the damsel is the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And I'm talking about then you know and then they turned, listen, Louise, they turned all of that weeping and hot howling and crying and all that stuff, they turned it into laughter. They laughed at Jesus. Then they laughed him to scorn. And Jesus was still very calm. You know, I've had people laugh at me too when I've said something to them, you know, and you just have to do like Jesus did. And when but when he had then, but when he had put them all out, he got rid of them. He just told them all. Away. <laughs> he says, "Okay." He got rid of them. <laughs> he taketh he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, you know, Peter, yeah. James, and John, and entered in where the damsel was lying. He all he had was the mother and father. He already told the daddy, 
be not afraid, only believe. Now the mother, I don't know how she was. Apparently she decided she was going to go along with it. And then he took the three disciples that had faith and went in there where the damsel was lying and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise, and straight forth the damsel arose. Praise the Lord, and walked. Not only that, she just got up right there. She got up and walked, and she was at the age of about 12 years. And they were all astonished, with great astonishment, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Yeah. Now, this is the other thing, Louise, I have to say. I want to know how they kept it secret. But anyway, he said, don't but say anything But you know, the other thing that I love but, about uh, Jesus is he's yes. concerned about your spirit. So yes, body. absolutely. And this little girl had been at really not dead. Well, I mean, she'd been very old. sick. And so the first thing he said was, give her some nourishment. That's right. Feed her body. That's right. And so... You know, God is cons He is consumed with our whole person. Yes, and amen. All of us. Yes. Everything about us. So, so let's is, review. What did we learn here today? Well, we learned that, that you have faith comes by hearing That's and right. hearing the Word of God. We talked about two people that had to have great faith. That woman had to have great faith. And then you had to act she had upon to act your faith. On and the, and, and, the, and, the, uh, and you ruler, had to speak your faith. He had to act. He, got, he told them. Don't be fearful. Come on. And you know, it to took him a long time to get from wherever he was back home. And he had to act. He had to act That's on right. his faith. And, and Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Fear is the opposite of faith. Get rid of unbelief. Get all and the people he out. got rid of all the the unbelief that surrounded this, this situation. And I'm going to say something about that right now before we go because we're about to leave. Um, if you are believing God for a, a healing or a manifestation of something in your life, number one, keep your mouth shut about it and don't talk about it to unbelievers because that develops a spirit of unbelief. And if you're in an unbelieving environment, a situation or a place or church or ministry, and I, I really mean this, if you're in a dire situation, you need to get yourself in a, uh, an environment of belief where people can stand on God's word with you, can believe God with you, and stand in faith. You don't need to be around unbelievers during this time and situation, and that's, that's right. exactly what Jesus did. Exactly Even right. Jesus, the Son of God, when he went back to Caper Capernaum, his hometown, and the, and they were they just they didn't believe who he was. I mean, it's just the, the carpenter's son. Right. And he could do no mighty works. He just healed a few sickly That's folks. Right. So, you know, we need to take all these teachings into mind, okay? That's correct. That's just, there's so much just in these couple of scriptures, Mally, yes, that and, are just... Yes, and it's powerful. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. See you another time. Goodbye. Bye.